The Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> I'm King, and you husky. King, the swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. <laughs> The sweating bartender at the Black Crow Cafe worked hurriedly, filling and refilling glasses for the men shouting at him from all sides. The room was warm and crowded, thick with raucous laughter and the heavy voices of miners just in from the creek beds. At the far end of the bar, Les Peterson stood talking to a tall, thin man dressed as a prospector, a man you'd notice in any crowd. The left side of his face was marked with a jagged scar that distorted his features, giving him an unpleasant, sneering expression. Hey, you had mighty unusual luck, didn't mister? Ain't many men strike it rich so soon. Yeah, I've been lucky all my life. <laughs> Friends used to call me Lucky Wally. Come out to the claim sometime. Yeah, I'll do that. The only time I see a white man to talk to is when I come in here. Well, so long, old yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Red, fix me up another one, will you? Well, I thought I'd find you here, Liz. Uh, hi there, Sergeant. See, you got King right with you. <laughs> How are you, boy, huh? Yeah, it's a great dog. Hey, you bet he is, Les. Worth twice his weight in gold. Hey, did you see, Doc? I'm supposed to meet him here for a game of poker. I was talking to him earlier this evening. He said he'd be here. Well, he's late as usual. <laughs> he's a funny guy, Sergeant. Oh, Doc? Yeah, I've known him for almost two years now. And all I can say about him, he's a sawbones. <laughs> He sure don't talk much about himself. No, he doesn't. I saw him operate once under almost impossible conditions. Pulled the patient through, too. He's a fine doctor, Les. But then every man's business is his own. As long as he keeps it on the right side of the law. <laughs> Speak of it. Here he comes now. Hey, Doc, over here. I got a feeling this is my lucky night, Sergeant. Well, that means you think you have a chance of winning back some of that gold that's gone into Doc's pocket, I suppose. I don't think it. I know it. Sorry if I kept you waiting, Les. Hello, Sergeant. How are you, Doc? Fine. Oh, you always keep me waiting, so don't make it sound unusual. Have a drink. That's what I'm here for. Red! Hey, Red! Well, you have to wave a flag to get his attention tonight. It's crowded, all right. Here you are, Doc. Oh, thanks, Red. What about you, Sergeant? No, no nothing for me, thanks. Well, you know the Mounties, Doc. Always on duty. I'm telling you, I don't know how they stand it. Well, uh, being a drinking man, it would be a little hard for you to understand, Les. Les thinks he's going to clean out your parts tonight, Doc. <laughs> yes. Yes, sirree. I feel lucky tonight. <laughs> well, come on. Let's get this table over here before someone else spots you. Where did I get the deck out? Say, you know, that's funny. Hmm? What? Me making that crack that I felt like this is my lucky night. Lewis, your luck never changes. You should know that by this time. No, I'm serious. While I was standing here waiting for Doc, a tall, skinny fellow was next to me. I noticed him because the scar on his left cheek, mean-looking thing, pulled his whole face off balance. Uh, on his left? Yeah, yeah. Says he's got a claim staked this side of Birch Creek. Yes? Well, he got talking. He was telling me how he got his claim staked. Seems like he's only been here a short time. I told him he was mighty lucky striking it. He said he'd always been lucky. Said his friends called him Lucky Wally. <laughs> Maybe I just got luck on the brain. I hope some of his brushes off on me. <laughs> uh, what what did you say his friends called him? Uh, lucky Wally. Why? What's wrong, Doc? You look like you'd seen a ghost. You know him? Hmm? Oh, know him? Well, you meet lots of people, Les. Where is he staked? This side of Birch Creek. How long ago did you see him? Oh, not so long. Oh, what's wrong, Doc? He was white as snow. Les, I wonder if you'd mind if we make this game for tomorrow night. Huh? His luck might be changed then. I'm sorry. You'll have to excuse me. Well, hold on. Wait a minute. He can't hear you, Les. Uh, how do you like that? We're just sitting here. I'm even cutting the deck, and he gets up and walks out. 
Hmm. It don't make sense. I can't say anything to make him mad. He's an even-tempered gent. Uh, he sure had a funny look in his face when he pushed that chair back. Yes. I wonder. Uh, might as well have another drink, I guess. It's a slim hunch. What? Doc was ready enough for that poker game before you mentioned that man you'd been talking to at the bar. Uh, you mean the fella that called himself Lucky Wally? That's right, the man with the scar. Oh, that's what I thought. Doc looked like he'd seen somebody come back from the dead. Like he couldn't believe it. Yet he hoped it was right. Where'd you say that man is staked? Uh, Birch Creek, why? I'm going out there. Good night, Les. <laughs> come on, King. Uh, first Doc and now you. Hey, Red, give me another drink. I have to make good time, King. I've seen the look in Doc's eyes and other men. Men bent on murder. The lights from the cafe spilled on the snow as Sergeant Preston ejected his parka against the bitting cold of the penetrating wind. Get the dogs up, King. On King! On you huskies! King ran ahead of the pack never once losing the trail, though it was hidden from Preston's eyes by darkness. The sled covered the miles, nearer and nearer to Birch Creek. There it is, boy, ahead. Lights from the cabin. I wonder if we're only in time. (coughs) Ho, ho, King! Ho, you huskies! We'll leave the sled here in the shadows of the cabin. Hmm. Someone else had the same idea. All right, fella. Finally, kid. Oh, Sergeant Preston, how did you... Mind if I come in, Doc? Uh, No, no. Who are you looking for? I found the man I'm looking for. What do you mean? I... uh... I thought so. A gun, huh? Yours, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. When you left the cafe tonight, you had a look in your eyes I've seen before. You know, I've been a policeman for a long time. Suppose you tell me why you want to kill this lucky Wally. How do you know? Well, there's no time to waste. He may be back any minute. All right, sit down, Sergeant. I will tell you. But I'm going through with it. You're not going to stop me. How long have you known him? I knew him back in the States. Goes back almost 15 years ago. Yes? Wally was an only child. The only grandchild of Mrs. McCready. Mrs. Randolph McCready. He was just a kid when I first met him. But even then, you could see that selfish greediness in his eyes. And as he grew up, his greed and his recklessness grew with him. I won't burden you with details, Sergeant. I was Mrs. McCready's physician. His mother and father? Both of them died when he was a baby. She doted on him, spoiled him, gave him everything he wanted. She had a bad heart. Perhaps you heard of the scandal that broke three years ago when she died suddenly. Yes. The McCready emerald was stolen at the time of her death never been discovered. It was... Yes, it was murder. I was blamed for the murder because the sleeping tablets I gave her caused the death. Wally had done it. Mrs. McCready had been very kind to me, put me through medical school when I was a boy, as a matter of fact. I think he was afraid she might leave some of her money to me. But that was ridiculous. I know you were completely exonerated in the trial. You knew that. But you never said anything. Why should I? Man's past is his own. Well, it ruined me. My practice fell to nothing as a result of the publicity. I'd heard Wally speak of the Yukon many times. I knew that someday he'd come up here. Well, that's why I came here. He's guilty of murder. It's never been proved. And the emerald? I'm convinced that he has it. He'd never dare sell it. At least not for another few years. I see. I swore I'd get him, Sergeant. No matter how long I waited, no matter how far I had to go... I knew someday I'd meet him again. You can't take the law into your own hands. I can make him pay for murdering the woman who was like a mother to me, and he will pay. He's already a murderer. Killing him will make you one. There's no other way. Yes, there is another way. Another way that you can perhaps have him jailed for the murder he committed. I know what I'm doing, Sergeant. And I won't let anything stand in my way. Listen to me, Doc. You mustn't let your desire for revenge blind you. Now listen to my plan. You'll come back to the cabin and find you. Don't you just do that. Again. 
The hours dragged on while Doc sat in the lonely cabin waiting for Wally McCready to return. King waited with him, listening. Oh, he's coming. All right, King, we're ready for him. What the... Come on in, Wally, and shut the door. You... How'd you... You look surprised. I, uh, I made myself at home. Here, sit down and have some tea. It'll warm you up. <laughs> I am surprised. You're the last person I'd expect to meet up here, McGregor. Why not up here? It's as good as any place else. Especially when you're a ruined man. Oh, you're thinking... Of... Yes, the trial. Of course, you don't remember it. Well, I read about it, all right. They freed you. Never did prove who killed the old lady, did they? Did they know the man who killed her made off with the emerald? Yeah. Mm, that's interesting, Doc. Well, I'll say this much for you. you make a good cup of tea. Glad you like it. What are you up here for? Gold? No. No, I came here because I knew sooner or later you would. Me? That's right. You always wanted to come up here and try that luck of yours. And it's still holding out, too. Oh, I struck a claim that'd knock your eyes out. And it's all mine, every bit of it. <laughs> it is too bad you didn't have some of my luck, Doc. You could have used it. I'm satisfied. What are you looking at? You? I'm wondering how long it'll be before you start feeling dizzy and sleepy. Before I... That tea you drank, Wally. What's wrong with it? It was a good enough way for your grandmother to die. It ought to be good enough for you. You... You poison I've me. waited a long time for this, and you walked right into no, it. No, no, I can't be. Your feet, they'll start to get numb soon. Yes, I, I drank it. I drank all of it. It'll be painless, just like going to sleep. Only you'll never wake up. You don't deserve to die painlessly. You, you've got to save me. I tell you, I'll, I'll turn the whole claim over to You're you. You're beginning to feel it, huh? Beginning to get dizzy? The whole claim, every bit of gold in it, it's all yours. There's something that'll save me. I know there is. I remember. I don't want your gold. I am beginning to get dizzy. My head... No, I'm wait. leaving you, Wally. No, 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 don't go. What do you want? Name your own price. Anything you say, you can save me, can't you? Yes, in my bag out on the sled, I have the antidote. Oh, bring it in. Anything you want. I'll sign all the mine over to you. I'll do anything you say. But hurry. There's only one thing I want. Well, what is it? Quick, what is it? The emerald. The emerald, Wally. That's what I want. The emerald? Yes. You took it from the safe. You've kept it with you all these years, haven't you? All right, it's you. I want it in my hands. But... Get that stuff before I... before it's too late. You have a few more minutes. Get the emerald. Here, here, here. It's in this pouch around my neck. Take it. Oh, I was right. You did it because she suspected you'd been taking money from the safe. Yes, yes. Now you have it. Now, now get that stuff. I'm... You're I'm, under arrest. What? You did a great job, Doc. Well, there was nothing to it, sir. Uh, he's poisoned me. I tell you, I'll die if he doesn't. You'll die, all right. But it'll be with a rope around your neck and not a pouch containing the McCready emerald. Oh, no, you don't understand. There was nothing in that tea, Wally. There was... You mean you... You lied to me. It was a trick. Yes, it was a trick. I had planned to kill you. But Sergeant Preston changed my mind. I knew you murdered your grandmother. But I had to have proof. Put these handcuffs on him, Doc. We'll take him back to Fort Munn tonight. All right. I know when I'm licked. Why did you insist King stay in this room with me, Sergeant? I was afraid Wally might pull a gun on you. King's used to handling a situation like that. I did him more to protect you than anything else. This arrest and your part in it, Doc, should wipe away all the unfavorable publicity you had as a result of the trial. You'll be able to go back to the States and take the place you deserve. I'll never be able to thank you. Yes, King, the case is closed. <laughs> Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, is brought to you each week at this same time and originates in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. All characters, names, places, and incidents used in this drama are...